Hello everybody and welcome to the Ignis Petrology Series Lesson 7. In this lesson I'm going to be talking about binary peritectic phase diagrams with liquid emissibility. So some terminology to start with. A peritectic point is an invariant point in a phase diagram. So that means it's a point that occurs at a fixed temperature pressure composition. A peritectic point is a reaction between a solid and a liquid phase that will produce a second solid phase. The solvus or solvus line is a boundary line between homogeneous solid solution and individual emissible phases. Okay, so it essentially represents a solubility limit of two different phases. And then we have two different types of reactions. We have what's known as a congruent reaction or congruent phase transformation. And this is a process by which phases of a system transitioning are the same composition. For example, a solid that's being melted, that melt is the same composition as the solid that which is being melted. An incongruent reaction or incongruent phase transformation is a process where a solid does not melt uniformly and the liquid is not the same composition as that which is being melted. For example, a reaction where a melting a solid creates a second solid and a liquid, like our peritectic point we're looking at in this presentation. Now, it's easy to know the definitions, but it might help some of you to see the definitions annotated onto the phase diagram we're going to be looking at today. So if I outline the diagram here, so we have Forsterite on the left-hand side of the x-axis, we have Quartz on the right-hand side of the x-axis, and we have Enstadite here sitting at around 70% Forsterite, 30% Quartz. And as always, at the y-axis, we have Temperature. So the top line, these are our liquidus, so anything above this is 100% liquid. Our liquidus represents a univariant field. So what that means is that there's one degree of freedom. What that means is that if we know the temperature, we know the composition. So for example, if the temperature is 1,800 degrees Celsius, we're going to hit here on our system, we're going to drop down, our composition has to be here. These are examples of continuous reactions because the solid is constantly changing composition during the evolution of the system. Here we have our invariant eutectic points that we looked at in the previous lesson. These are discontinuous reactions here. So these occur at a fixed temperature and composition. Then we have another invariant point that we're looking at today is this peritectic point, which is another example of a discontinuous reaction. In this particular phase diagram, what will happen when the system reaches that point is that forsterite will react with the liquid to produce enstatite. So we're beginning to consume the forsterite that we've already crystallized. And finally, up here we have the solvus. This represents the solubility limit between a magnesium-rich and a silica-rich liquid, which we'll look at later on in this presentation. So if we picture our phase diagram, we're now going to go through an example of equilibrium crystallization. Picture a system here. We're going to cool it down. We're going to hit the liquidus. We're going to crystallize some full strike from our liquid. We're going to continue to evolve that. And if we wanted to pause that here, just to apply the lever principle that we looked at in previous lessons. So if we apply the equation, we have 51% liquid represented by this longer arm here and 41% solid represented by this shorter line here. If we continue to evolve that, we're going to hit that peritectic point and we're going to undergo a reaction of forsterite plus liquid equals enstatite. This is a discontinuous reaction since we're eventually going to run out of one of the reactants. We're going to run out of either forsterite or liquid. In this case, we run out of liquid first, since the system exists to the left of the peritectic point. An easy way of envisaging what that means is that if we extended this line of enstatite all the way up, if the system exists to the left side, we're going to run out of liquid first. If the system exists to the right side, so essentially in this small gap here, we're going to run out of forsterite first. So at this particular point, because liquid is going to be consumed first, we're going to eventually end up with forsterite plus enstatite for our final solidified products. In the next example, we're going to look at what happens if the system exists somewhere in this line here, where the cursor is. So for that, we're going to zoom in for a little bit of ease. So now we've zoomed in, picture a system here. We're going to cool it, we're going to hit that liquidus. We're going to crystallize our first forsterite in our liquid, something like this. And we're going to cool that down until we hit our peritectic point. Now we're at the peritectic point again, and we're still going through the reaction of forced right plus liquid equals enstatite, which again is a discontinuous reaction since we're going to run out of one of these eventually. And in this case, we're going to run out of forced right first. So all that forced right we've crystallized is going to be now reacted with the liquid to form enstatite. And what that means is that we're going to do something like this. 
So our liquid is now going to evolve down here rather than stop and evolve into this divariant forced right plus Enster type field. And we're going to hit a eutectic point. So now we're at the eutectic point. We're going to crystallize a eutectic mixture of Enster type and silica until all the liquid is removed. And we're going to do that continuously at this temperature. This again is another example of a discontinuous reaction. We're at an invariant point and we're going to run out of the liquid, which we eventually do and our system will evolve from there. So now we're going to look at an example of incremental fractional crystallization. Envisage the system here. We're going to cool it until we hit our liquidus, at which point we're going to crystallize our first four strike from our magma, and the system will continue to evolve through a continuous reaction to this point. At this point, we're going to remove all that four strike we've crystallized so far. So we remove all the crystallized olivine, which would maybe make something like a dunite or a cumulate rock, and the system shifts naturally to continue crystallization now on the right side of the peritectic line. So we started to the left hand side, so we would end up in this field, force right plus enster type, but we remove that olivine and now we exist to the right hand side of this. And we're going to continue, we're going to hit the peritectic point, all our forced right is going to be consumed in this discontinuous reaction, hit our eutectic again, and end up with the same result as we did for the second equilibrium crystallization example. So let's tackle something a little bit different in this phase diagram, the solvus. If we picture a system here, we're going to cool it until we hit the solvus, and at which point an originally homogeneous mixture is going to split into a magnesium-rich liquid to the left and a silica-rich liquid to the right. And we're going to evolve something like this. The silica-rich liquid is going to hit that eutectic point and it's going to undergo a reaction of silica-rich liquid equals magnesium-rich liquid plus cristobalite. The magnesium-rich liquid will then evolve towards the enzotite eutectic point. We're going to eventually have these two systems by the green diamonds here, and we're going to have now cristobalite, and then our magnesium-rich liquid is going to start from here, so we have the yellow sphere, which is our liquid, and now we're going to crystallize cristobalite, and we're going to evolve down the system like this. Okay, And then our magnesium-rich liquid is going to hit that eutectic point, and it's going to crystallize the eutectic mixture of enstatite and cristobalite. And then it will eventually evolve from the solidus downward. Thank you for listening. I hope you found this helpful. Stay in the loop by clicking subscribe. Any questions you have, drop them in the comment box. Thank you.